According to UDISC, Ohio is rated as the seventh best state in the United States for disc golf. With 370 courses, including some top-rated courses like Echo Valley and Caesar Ford near Dayton, Finley State Park and Friends of Punderson near Cleveland, and Eagle Ridge, Lobdell Reserve, and Brent Hambrick Memorial all around central Ohio. And that's before we even talk about Cincinnati. Ohio is also home to 72 stores, including six-sided discs, of course. But despite all those courses, stores, and Ohio's long history as a hub of manufacturing in the Midwest, Pie Pan Discs became Ohio's first and only disc golf manufacturer in 2021. And these are our first impressions. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. Huge thanks to Pie Pan for giving us these discs to test out in today's video. Though Pie Pan Discs has already been around for two years, there's a lot we don't know about their discs and the company. So in addition to throwing the discs to see how they fly, we're also going to ask them a few questions along the way. Now there's just as much variety in disc golf company names as there is in how the discs will fly. So naturally we wanted to understand where the name Pie Pan Discs came from. Pie Pan says, quote, naming your company isn't easy. They went on to say that they wanted something fun that gave some love back to the history of the sport. This reference to Pie Pan actually goes back way further than disc golf, all the way to the origins of the Frisbee. According to the World Flying Disc Federation, the first known published reference to the sport of Frisbee came in 1957, published by a faculty member of Princeton University, who said that the sport was, quote, just another form of spring fever as they saw students throwing Frisbees around campus. The Frisbee family, spelled with an I-E, opened a bakery in Connecticut in the late 1800s. The business became successful, and the Frisbee Pie Company expanded into New York and Rhode Island. Their best-selling items, pies and cookies, really took off, peaking in 1956 when they baked a whopping 80,000 pies a day. Students from places like nearby Yale University bought Frisbee pies and cookies and reused the tins and lids to throw. Each pie pan had the word Frisbee, still with an IE, stamped on the bottom, and the term stuck as the name spread across the Northeast at other universities, including Amherst, Dartmouth, and Princeton. Meanwhile, on the West Coast, inventor Fred Morrison, a participant in this pie pan throwing, created a plastic disc inspired by flying saucers, as space had a firm grip on popular culture in the 1950s. By the late 1950s, Whammo saw Morrison selling his discs in downtown Los Angeles, and hired him, trademarking the name Frisbee, this time with two E's. After hearing the term on a tour of Ivy League schools, officially renaming the product in June 1957. You can learn more about the early days of Frisbee and disc golf on the World Flying Disc Federation's website at wfdf.sport. So the term pie pan does have some really interesting origins in the early days of Frisbee sports. But how does that translate then into modern day disc golf? Well, let's take a look at their first disc, the Bagger, approved by the PDGA in August of 2021. While some disc naming schemes are obvious, like MVP's science and technology named discs, or Lone Star's Texas inspired line, Pipan's disc names at first glance don't immediately fit within a theme. So I asked where the names come from. They said, quote, the names are all based off of characters you would see at your local course, which means the bagger is inspired by the terminally underrated players at your local tournaments or leagues that crush you in lower divisions year after year. Move up, bagger. The disc itself, though, is a two-speed putter with three glide, zero turn, and one fade. It has a moderate bead with a low profile and flat top. The bagger is typically available in butterline plastic, which is a moderately stiff but tacky plastic that feels great for putting. We were also given a bagger in an early prototype version of their twice-baked recycled plastic. This prototype plastic is an interesting blend, slightly more flexible than Butterline, but it is incredibly slick to the touch. Whereas Butterline gives you a bit of grip, this twice-baked plastic takes almost all of that grip away. Amazingly though, this didn't seem to take away Caleb's ability to throw or putt with the twice-baked bagger. Off the tee, the bagger has just the right amount of overstability to be reliable, but workable. And while putting, the bagger will prove popular with anyone that likes a beaded, 
flat top putter. While researching Pipan, I was excited to hear that they're the only manufacturer in Ohio, but I wanted to know more about exactly where they're located and where they're making these discs. Pipan says their discs are manufactured in Greene County, Ohio, which is home to Xenia, a suburb on the outskirts of Dayton, and one of Ohio's top disc golf courses in Caesar Ford Park. It also has close proximity to another top five course, Echo Valley. Now, Dayton is a hub for disc golf in Ohio, home to dozens of courses, several retail stores, and notable players, including Innova's Christine Jennings, who you may recognize from the Disc Golf Network's media team. So the location alone has pretty good pedigree. Does that then translate to making quality discs? Almost one year to the day after the release of the bagger, Pipan released the Grunt. The Grunt is a control driver rated at nine speed, five glide, negative one turn, and two fade which pits it against some heavyweights in the world of disc golf, including the Discraft Undertaker, the Castaplast Lots, the Discmania CD1, and many more. The Grunt is named after a player every town needs, someone who you can always count on to be doing work on the course, volunteering, and supporting the community. Shout out to all the Grunts out there and everything you do for your local disc golf community. The grunt that we're testing is in Pipan's Cherry Plastic, a translucent blend similar to Innova's Champion Plastic. It is also available in Baker's Blend, a premium plastic similar to Innova's Star Plastic. Now a disc that's gonna be challenging the Undertaker needs to have the perfect blend of overstability but controllable accuracy on the fairway. So does the grunt have what it takes? We think so. The grunt definitely has a decent amount of turn, but on every occasion given room to fly, it has a nice, strong fade at the end of its flight. Meaning that even if you add power or angle to your throw, the grunt should fly true to its numbers. Two discs down and two winners so far, but what more can we learn about Pipan discs? So we know where Pipan's discs are made, but that led me to another question. With so many newer companies partnering up with other manufacturers, such as ThoughtSpace and Mint with MVP, AGL, Reptilian, and many others with Gateway, even Infinite Discs with Innova. Why did Pipan choose to manufacture their own discs instead of working with a molding partner? Well, Pipan began by pointing out that they started during COVID, and the COVID market was completely unique to both the way it was before and since. While they looked into local manufacturing partners, it was never their intention to partner with anyone else because they wanted to quote, control their own destiny. Complete control over their own discs was ultimately the most important factor, but that does come with its own unique set of challenges, which we'll hear about in just a moment. Next, let's talk about their only current mid-range disc, The Conspiracy. Inspired by perhaps a slightly less fun to meet person on the course, The Conspiracy stamp depicts a player who buys into all the conspiracy theories. It shows a player on the moon throwing a UFO with a tinfoil hat towards an Illuminati pyramid with a flat earth in the background. And I'll go ahead and start another conspiracy theory that this is actually a secret collaboration with Doomsday Discs. The branding is spot on. The disc itself is rated at 5.5, negative 2.0, and Pipan say it's a perfect mid-range for players of all skill levels. For true beginners, the Conspiracy should fly more like a straight mid-range. But for any kind of power thrower, the Conspiracy is so understable. Even thrown at low power here from Caleb, it turns over immediately, and it was never going to come back. Unless it hit a tree. But there's still something to be said for reliable understability, as reliability is good when you're out on the course. Moving on then to their last disc, the Spire. Pipans say the Spire has a special personal meaning. The Spire is named in honor of Scott Burnett, PDGA number 20173, who passed away in April of 2023 after a battle with cancer. The term Spire refers to a player at the top of their game and somebody who is a pillar in the community. For them, that was Scott Burnett. In 2002, Scott won the first USDGC Amateur Nationals, making him the first disc golfer to be featured in Sports Illustrated, and he would later be inducted into the Ohio Disc Golf Hall of Fame. The first Scott Burnett Open was played just one month after his passing in May of 2023. Approved by the PDGA in March of 2023, the Spire is Pipan's go-to distance driver. 
rated at 12.5, negative one, two in Baker's blend or 12.5, negative one, three in cherry plastic. The Spire is a very fast, very domey distance driver. Pipan say that issues during development made the Spire the most difficult nut to crack, or in their words, this one just about made us quit. They were determined though, and after a lot of trial and error, we can now see how it flies. On several shots, it looked quite promising, showing us that negative one turn and then a decent fade as well. But it also showed us a lot more than negative one turn on multiple occasions. These last two shots were filmed at Lobdell Reserve in Alexandria, Ohio on a pretty windy day. So the best we can say is that the Spire, at least in Baker's Blend Plastic, shouldn't be your first choice for a headwind disc. However, the more overstable Cherry Plastic might be more ideal for those windy days. So what's next for Pie Pan Discs? Well, now Pipan says after introducing these core discs to their lineup, they're more focused on growing their brand's recognition in the disc golf market. But that doesn't mean that things aren't still in development. While they are a small company, they've learned a lot about making discs, and they're now starting to incorporate new and improved plastics, such as Glow, their recycled twice-baked plastic, and their new Satin Cherry Blend, which is a recycled premium plastic. They haven't landed on just what their next disc will be, but they say it's likely to be either a stable mid-range or an understable fairway. My last question for Pipan is maybe the hardest to answer. With so many options available these days for disc golfers to choose from, why should people try Pipan? Well, in their own words, we hope to offer a new option from the norm. As more and more brands pair up in manufacturing, you will get less and less overall options. And there's one more thing that makes Pipan unique they do not sell direct to consumers. They went on to say, quote, when we started, we discussed whether or not to sell directly to the public. While that seems to be the norm, it's not the plan we want. At one time, manufacturers and shops had a special relationship where both parties were fully committed to each other's growth. Unfortunately, that relationship has changed over time. Pipan chooses to only sell to retail stores because, quote, shops need it. It's hard to run a business, especially when you're competing against the companies that make the products you sell. Clearly a reference to the fact that when a retail store buys a new release disc, we are trying to sell it the same time that that manufacturer is selling it direct to consumers. So if you're looking to buy some pie pan discs, check your local retailer. And if your local retailer doesn't have any, refer them over to the wholesale section of pie pans website. All in all, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with Pie Pan Discs for a smaller, newer manufacturer. They have some really high quality plastic and great discs. When I spoke with them earlier this year at Idlewild, I heard a genuine enthusiasm for disc golf, for experimenting and learning from their mistakes and continuing to push the sport of disc golf forward. And so far, I have to say they're getting it right more often than not. Comment below your thoughts on Pie Pan Discs and what brands or discs you'd like to see us look at in the future. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. Now there's just as much variety. Now there's just as much variety in. They went on to say that they wanted something fun that gave some love back to the origins of the sport. They went on to say, Okay, can we put this in dark mode? My eyes. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, so much better. Peking in 1956, when they baked a whopping 80,000 pies a day. That is a lot of pie. They haven't fully... Pizer? Yeah, show it to the camera so I know what it is. Yeah. Grunt. Give it, a, give it a tennis grunt. With the bloopers, baby. Ah! <laughs> I like the pipe. Oh. I wonder. I wonder how it's supposed to fly.
you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.